just like a beginning. Um, I want to welcome all of you today. Um, it's very exciting to have this program here at, at the, the library. My name is Judy Knudsen, and I manage the Virginia Room, which is the local history collection here at the Central Library. And we not only have Virginia and Arlington history, but we are also a community archives. And that means that we don't collect the records of Arlington County, the official records, but we collect the records of the people and the organizations in Arlington. So we have civic association, neighborhood association, individual records. And I always like to make a plea that if any of you have photographs, you're in an organization where you have organizational records, uh, you might want to think about donating some of these to us because we are unusual in that we have a full-time archivist whose job it is to process those collections, to preserve those collections for people in the future. So uh, on that note, I will now turn the program over to Brenda Cox. Thank you, Judy, and I'd like to welcome all of you uh, fellow Hoffman Boston Trojanites, the excessive word. Uh, we're here today because we, uh, we went to Hoffman Boston. As most of you know, Hoffman Boston served the, as a junior senior high school from 1916 to 1965 to educate the children of the black communities in Arlington. And those communities were Green Valley, Johnson Hill, Halls Hill, and Hatsville. This was back when it was seg uh, segregation. I think when the school closed in 1965, we were, uh, we were still the Negro children. But through the years, we were Negro, then we were Afro-American, and now we are the black community. So <laughs> we've gone through a series of things. But to give you a background, the reason why we're here, several years ago, I discovered that one of our parents, Mr. Milton Rowe, had done a home movie, a Super 8 home movie of the 1963 homecoming game, uh, the, the game, the, the celebration, and he has preserved it 49 years. And I just told him that this was his, of historic importance, and I thought that the community needed to know about it. So it took him several years to give it up, and earlier this year he gave it to me and told me to see to it that it got put in the Virginia room here at the library. I said, I will do that, Mr. Rowe, but it is no need to put it there if nobody knows that it is there. So to that end, we are here today to relive some of our memories of Hoffman Boston from the community. I'm about to play this DVD you will, it is the game, the Queen's Court, Mr. Richardson presenting the Queen's Court, the activities, the guys who had their convertibles and the parade, and it depicts our community coming together as, well, unlike we see today, but it, it really depicts a time in history that we probably won't see again. So I'm gonna play the DVD, it is short, but look closely, and uh, I think you'll see some of your, yourselves and some of your family members. Okay? Okay. A minute. Let me see. Let's go back. On the DVD, on the, this is the uh, Lomax Church's involvement in the March on Washington. That was the beginning of it. And, this, and then um, uh, the homecoming comes up. So guys, if you know your number, you know where you are. <laughs> and there's no sound here, but if any of you know who we played and if we won the game, that would be helpful. <laughs> we, won the, we won the game. Do you remember who we were playing? Okay, and there were schools in other counties, <laughs> the Jenny Dink in Prince William County. Warrington, because back in those days, we couldn't play other schools in Arlington. Yeah, Gucci was there. 
You know, Mrs. Davis had us in our drill team. And our parents always had us coordinated. Once they planned it, we all always had our uniforms. Re remember that building? Is it still there? <laughs> it is it? Oh, okay. Alvin. Alvin. That's Gisla and Yvonne. Isaac and Tony That's the French and Club and the nurses. Connie, Shelby, Connie and, and Shelby. Uh, Sheila, is it coming up? Sheila Payne. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Alice, Alice Council, Donna, Geraldine, and Marcia. Back in the day, we dressed. <laughs> Mr. Richardson affectionately called the blade. number 81. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Who, who's kicking off? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What's his number? Seven, 17, okay. <laughs> okay, that is it. I think that is priceless. In fact, I know it is. I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we're going to have a panel discussion. Can we have the table back up now? And we're going to talk about briefly the um, memories of life at Hoffman Boston. And today we have with us one of our former teachers, Mrs. Louise McGregor, who is going to speak about the teacher's perspective of being at Hoffman Boston. We have a member of the class of 1949, uh, Loretta Haskins Reed, who's going to speak about the early years. We're going to have um, members. Memory, memories of a transfer student, Ms. Sandra Costley Green, who left Hoffman Boston and went to Washington and Lee early on the, in the seventh, eighth grade. Mrs. Vivian Bullock is going to tell us something about being a guardian of one of the students and Hoffman Boston's involvement during massive resistance. I don't know that that, that is commonly known, but she's going to speak about her involvement there. And then we're going to have a tribute to Hoffman Boston from a member of the class of 1964, Dennis Turner. So at this point, if you, the panelists could come up. Okay, Ms. McGregor, you can start off. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I guess I'm about the oldest one here. I just celebrated my 90th birthday on New Year's oh. Day. <laughs> So if I forget something, you'll know why. <laughs> Sometimes you know things now, and uh, 10 minutes later, you've forgotten it. <laughs> so, so bear with me. And I am in a lot of pain today, but I just could not. I tried to do the best I can to get here because I just was so fond of uh, Hoffman Boston and the students as well as the uh, uh, faculty. The history of Hoffman Boston High School deals with remarkable individuals who developed the school students and teachers struggle to maintain high academic standards. The fact that so many students and teachers excelled in their chosen professions is a testament to the excellence of Hoffman Boston. You'll see it right here today. 
with uh, uh, the photographer and uh, Brenda Cox and and others. You know, I can't remember everybody's name nowadays, and they've grown up so they don't look like they used to look. <laughs> okay. I became aware of Hoffman Boston when I moved to Arlington in February 1958. I didn't expect employment because I assumed all teachers had been hired for the year. Due to my interest in education, I visited Hoffman Boston and met the principal, Mr. George Richardson. Little did I know he was interviewing for a home economics teacher to replace a teacher on maternity leave. It was a blessing that I was in the right place at the right time. Upon the return of the home ec teacher, I was assigned to teach courses in the area of general education. I found the staff to be friendly and helpful in adjusting to a new environment. I also discovered that many of the teachers were relatively new due to closing of many black schools in the South. Schools throughout the South, they were from Oklahoma, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, and of course I was from Florida. I, I, was, I was smaller than most of my students and I had to inform them of my rules and regulations <laughs> the first 30 minutes of the class. <laughs> and fortunately for me, in those days, I could use my board of education. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I demanded respect for me and other students. It was a pleasure working with the students and their parents. In those days, we often visited students' homes and met the entire family. I witnessed the closing of HB and the process of busing our students to schools with only white students. Many of our students were unhappy with the transfer. They really loved HB. Teachers were also transferred to other schools. And to be sure, they didn't let but one or two of us in the same school because I guess they thought we were going to cause a riot or something. <laughs> Don't let two of us get to talking because they were really scared and they turned all kind of colors. <laughs> we had the opportunity to help the students adjust and control their anger and counsel them in many ways. Many of the students, parents, and faculty are no longer with us. As a result, I bring you peace, love, and greetings from Hoffman Boston High School. Okay, the next one will be uh, the early years, the class of 1949, Mrs. Loretta Haskins Reed. My name is Loretta Haskins Reed. I'm a product of the Hoffman Boston Elementary, Junior, and Senior High School. There were 12 rooms. When my parents enrolled me in the year 1938, I attended all grades one through six. Then we had a graduation in 44 and moved on to Junior High School, which was upstairs. I graduated from Junior High in 47 because we were allowed to go to summer school and if we did well, we were passed. I guess they thought this was the best babysitter and kept me out of trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> I was running a year ahead, then just went down the hall to the high school from which I graduated from in June 1949. Teachers I remembered from elementary school was Mrs. Belcher, who was then Mrs. Rome, Mrs. Alice Fleet, Miss Doretha Mosley, Mrs. Cars, Mr. Baltimore, a real pushover, and Mrs. B.D. Burt, the sixth grade with a strap. <laughs> <laughs> Our principal was Mr. C.V. Rose. Never did find out what the initials meant, but there was never an assembly started that we didn't sing the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. There were no yearbooks. The history books never told the true story. The true story, there's so much history that we don't know about. I applaud Miss Cox and Mr. Rowe who had the forethought to put this together. 
In my graduating class, there were four people. Two are sitting here with me today. The other, a boy, is deceased. <clears throat> Huffman Boston, as you see it today, is different in that we added on to the building. We had one room for each grade, an auditorium, and a girl's bathroom and a boy's bathroom at opposite ends of the hall. Later, they built another building where they taught shop for the boys, Mr. Halstead, and homemade taught by Mrs. Early for the girls. There was a chemistry lab. Mrs. Eva Champion taught that. Mrs. Griffin taught us typing, an interesting story. We all had to buy our typewriters if we wanted to take typing. That year, that was my Christmas present. The books were awful. The teachers would go to the county warehouse and pick out the best ones. They were hand-me-downs from the other schools. We had to clean them up. We would threaten us about what they'd do to us if we lost one. We had plenty outdoor space, and once a year, they had a May Day. Mr. Griffin taught us PE. There was Mr. Washington, who taught us history, Mrs. Mackley, who taught math, and Mrs. Pinkart, who taught us English. Our school and our teachers were really great. They instilled pride in us, and they really pushed us to do our very best. There were teachers who would take their money and buy food and clothes, <clears throat> supplies for the students. There was a personal touch there. We had to study hard to make them also look good. We knew we had to be better than anyone else. Parents came to PTA meetings and the teachers would tell the truth and parents would react. <laughs> <laughs> you know they tell the teachers if you didn't act right, they had permission to punish and they would punish you when you got home and sometimes the neighbors would take care of you before you got home. <laughs> Most of the teachers had taught brothers, sisters, and cousins. They knew the families and what you could probably get away with. Mr. Sidnall was the principal when we graduated. He lived across the street from me. Our librarian was in the Carver Recreation Center, a small building on the corner of 13th and Queen Street. Her name was Louise Owens. She gets special books from the county library for us. It was a branch library that was before integration. When they were gathering material for the time capsule at the Hoffman Boston, they made copies of my diplomas and included them in the capsule. Mm -hmm. Capsule was dated April the 26, 2002. Two books I'd recommend you to read The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of American Great Migration by Isabel Wilkerson, and The Book of Negroes by Lawrence Hill. Thank you. And now Sandra Costley Green will speak to us about life as a transfer student. And she was a member of the Washington and Lee class of 1964. Good morning. Um, I wanted to speak on uh, my perspective as a transfer student leaving Huffman Boston. As any 12 or 13 year old getting ready to go to junior high school, you know you're excited to go. And I was looking so forward to going to HB with my brothers and all of my friends. Uh, I only got to be at HB for the seventh grade, and then my parents told me that I would be going to Stratford for the eighth grade. Um, I reluctantly went, you know, you did what you were told to do. Um, but that summer before we went to Stratford, we were in workshops all day, every day at the church. And we were taught all of these things in preparation of going to Stratford. We were coached on how to speak, how to eat, uh, what to say, what to wear. And it really gave you a sense of feeling inferior. I mean, you were just like, what am I getting ready to go into? So we went to school in September to Stratford. 
And it was a true eye opener for me because we were as prepared as anybody else. We were as bright as all the other kids. Yes. We always had manners, mm. respect, yes. and all of the things that you were worried about, you never had to worry about mm. because the teachers and the parents at Huffman Boston and your parents had taught you through life all that you ever needed to know. Um, we excelled in everything. We were good in our academics, um, and that just didn't happen over a summer. You had to be prepared for that. Um, English, math, history, all of the classes, the basic courses, you had gotten that foundation at Langston, Drew, and Hoffman Boston and Carver. Mm -hmm. You had that foundation. So all of the things that our parents and the teachers and all were concerned about, we had been prepared for long before we got to the integrated schools. One of the things that um, I will always remember is leaving my friends and the lack of a real fellowship and a real social life. So every opportunity I got, I was on a bus going back to HB for whatever they were doing after school. Mm -hmm. um, in the early years, we couldn't be a cheerleader because we were told they weren't ready for that yet. You couldn't try out for the special choirs. Uh, they weren't ready for that yet. In the early years, you couldn't play sports. So all of those extracurricular activities mm -hmm. and the things that we wanted to do uh, as youngsters, you just couldn't do for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would leave Stratford and get on a bus and go down to HB and I would sing if I wanted to. Miss Hill would continue to let me sing, and I would watch the cheerleaders. Always wanted to be a cheerleader, uh, but never got the chance to be. Um, what we did get from integration, of course, the facilities were better, the books were better. You had opportunity to take some courses that you didn't have at HB. Um, but from my perspective, the students that came out of Huffman Boston um, were as well prepared mm. as those of us who came out of the integrated schools. Um, I, st I continue to have my friends from Huffman Boston and will have them for a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, and I married a man from Huffman Boston. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the experience in the integrated school was, it was a good experience and it prepared me for a lot of things. But I don't think I would have been any less prepared if I had graduated from HB. Now we're going to hear from Mrs. Vivian Bullock, who was the guardian to one of the students who came to Hoffman Boston after the schools in Prince Edward County uh, closed uh, as a result of massive resistance to integration. Uh, I'm going to speak on a little on massive resistance. Virginia's great leap backward. <laughs> after Virginia's school closing law was ruled unconstitutional in January of 1959, the General Assembly repealed the compulsory school attendance law and made the operation of public schools a local option for the states, counties, and cities. Schools that had been closed in Front Royal, Norfolk, and Charlottesville reopened because citizens there preferred integrated schools to none at all. It was not so with Prince Edwards County Schools. Ordered on May 1, 1959 to integrate the schools, the county instead closed the entire public school system. The Prince Edward Foundation <coughs> created a series of schools to educate the county's white children. These schools were supported by tuition grants from the state and local credits from the county. 
Prince Edwards County Academy became the prototype for the all-white private schools. No provision was made for educating the county's black children. Some got schooling with relatives in nearby communities or at makeshift schools in church basements. Others were educated out of state by groups such as the Society of Friends. In 1963 to 64, the Prince Edward's Free Schools picked up some of the slack, but some pupils missed part or all of their education for five years. Mr. George Richardson, who was then principal of Hoffman, Boston, mm -hmm. contacted my family, Mr. Ernest and Mignon Johnson, mm -hmm. with a request to send a student to school in Arlington. I was also asked to take a student in my home, which I did. These were two students from Farmville, Virginia, mm -hmm. Mamie Jones and Freddie Cobb. Maybe you remember them. <laughs> Both attended Hoffman, Boston. Mm -hmm. Freddie, for two years, from 1961 to 1963. Mamie Jones graduated in 1962. Last week, I spoke with Freddie Cobb, who lives in Raleigh, North Carolina now, with his wife, and his daughter is in Richmond. He sends greetings to all classmates and reminisced with me about the time he spent at Hoffman, Boston. Mm -hmm. He said he enjoyed so much being here, because he was from uh, not a really urban setting here, and he enjoyed the teachers. He said all the teachers were wonderful, and he sends his regards to any who are left here. Also, Prince Edward's County School opened its integrated doors in 1964. Let us remember those students who strove so diligently out of their environment to get an education. And let us give honor to Hoffman Boston for its support of the Prince Edwards County black students. The last speaker, but certainly not least on the panel, is Mr. Dennis Turner, who is a member of the graduating class of 1964. Good morning. My name is Dennis Turner, and I'm a member of the last graduating class at Huffman Boston in 1964. Unlike Sandra Costa Green, uh, who gave a very flowing oral report on integration, I had to go to summer school and I had to write this down. <laughs> First and foremost, I'd like to thank all those who've made this event possible and a special thanks to uh, Ms. Brenda Cox for having me as a panelist as we mark an era in Arlington black history. I, <clears throat> I am truly grateful and honored to be here. Uh, to begin with, Huffman Boston High School had a, an established history as a center for black education that served four black Arlington communities, no, namely in Northern Virginia, which was affectionately known as Halls Hill, Hatsfield, Far South Arlington, which was affectionately known as Green Valley, and the community that the institution was built in, Johnson Hill. Huffman Boston was an oasis. Okay, Huffman Boston had <clears throat> a very rich culture that came from a very rich heritage. See, when, when you're subjected to adversity, you evolve, mm -hmm. okay? So it gives me great pleasure to thank and acknowledge the parents and teachers who toil scrape, save, sacrifice, and oh yeah, they, they use layaway as a means to make sure that we had what we needed. <laughs> yeah. 
And by the way, the milk at the cafeteria at HB, three cent a carton. <laughs> um, see, we were, excuse me. See, we were nurtured by the administration, the staff, the teachers, the cafeteria staff, the janitors, the bus drivers, and the substitute teachers. We were encouraged in every class, every class. We were inspired in every class. We were motivated in every class. Also, the students had a code of conduct and an expected behavior, or it would be immediately addressed. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Our teachers had a relationship with our parents. You know, our teachers would call our parents. And to be honest with you, I, I really wish that we had had caller ID back in the day. <laughs> who, who was that on the phone? Some salesman trying to sell us some encyclopedias, Mom. <laughs> But uh, Huffman Boston was a surrogate mother to all of us, each and every one of us. HB was family. Uh, we grew at HB. We were molded and prepared to assume mature adult responsibilities upon leaving HB and going out to explore our potential. Huffman Boston will forever be a part of our lives and our history. Then came the imposition of integration. And um, this broke the hearts of all students past, but to all who had the hope of equality, this was look at, looked at with apprehension that turned us into being cautiously optimistic. Perhaps this could give the generations behind us an opportunity to advance. Um, <clears throat> hopefully be awarded scholarships in the sciences or the or, or, or athletics or, or, or the arts. Perhaps those generations behind us could be our voice or, or be our vote. Maybe this generation could be instrumental in our country becoming academically and technologically closer to being number one instead of 17th in the world. But the very thought of integration begs the question, what is the intent? and what will be its impact, okay? To begin with, I believe we've never integrated. We've only desegregated. Because it begs the question again, why wasn't black history taught as a component of the curriculum? You know, um, uh, what about our heritage? What about our culture? See, if you don't know your history, you won't know your future. And see, for me, I love Huffman Boston for what it stood for and the foundations for life it established. Oh, and that cautious optimism I was talking about, it's going downhill. See, I don't ever remember a student bringing a weapon to HB. I don't ever, uh-oh. See, I don't ever remember the police surrounding HB because we had to be evacuated. I might not, I might not finish this. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I don't ever remember the police surrounding HB because we had to be evacuated because some nut is in the building. I, I, don't, I don't ever remember bullying or anyone becoming socially withdrawn or unaccepted as a result of being bullied. I, I, I don't remember that. There was no peer group pressure back then. There was competition. That's what we had, competition. There was teasing, there was jostling, and of course, you know in our community, there was joning. We joned. <laughs> had a joan. No joan, no joy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was one of those kind of things. But um, um, there wasn't. 
and you, you know, and, 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 and never was there any degradation, even out of the teasing the Jonies or anything like that, or the pressure. If they, they call it pressure today, we call it competition. We had to be competitive. We were all we had. And we were very supportive of each other. See, um, so today, how can a student learn with negative elements all around them that goes totally unaddressed? How can a student of today apply themselves? What can be done? It's very, very simple. Uh, institute some of the old <laughs> HB principles. <laughs> no nonsense, serious discipline. School is a learning center. It is not a recreation center. Uh, Arlington Public Schools are free. Please take advantage of this privilege and please don't take the life of our generation for granted. I'd like to say thank you to all in the past and all in the present. I say a special thanks to all the parents, especially my mother who used to get phone calls on a daily basis. <laughs> Miss Mildred Turner, wave your hand. Mike. <laughs> and last, and I want you to take this with you, the HB spirit still lives within us. It was HB that it really excited us. You know, uh, Huffman Boston High School will always be in our hearts. Although we are here to review the history of HB, more importantly, we are here to continue to embrace it. Can't touch that, can we? <laughs> I want to thank each and every one of you for agreeing to participate today. At this point, you've heard our panel give a nice reminisce. We're going to open the, um, the floor up for reminiscence from the, from the floor. Mr. Vollin, um, let me bring you the microphone. Yeah, I'll bring this. And identify yourself, because it's being taped, OK? Uh, my name is William Vollin. And uh, let's give the panel a hand. They were fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations to Brenda and those. Brenda kept and Mr. Vollin, be there, be there. I'm, uh, there's not too much more we can add to this. I was a graduate of Hoffman, Boston in 1947, at the tender age of 16. <laughs> I'm a testament to what Hoffman Boston has done. I think what happens, what, is, what they're saying is, we've broken down the stereotype view that we had to go to white schools to get fixed. I wanna repeat that. We had, excellent, we had an excellent staff, well-trained staff, and I was a victim of, we had, no, we, we had hand-me-down books, as they indicated, from Washington Lee and the other places. When I was there, we had no lab. <coughs> when I was there, we had no gym. And uh, there were a number of things we, not an adequate library, but we survived. Let me give you a quick rundown. I finished off in Boston, got my bachelor's degree, went on into the Army, I got my, uh, another bachelor's, and I ended up at George Washington University with a master's degree. All that as a result of Huffman Boston. <laughs> Taught in Arlington County. I was in Arlington County for 30 years. 17 years as principal of Glebe Elementary School. So I'm not bragging, but this is a result of Huffman 
Boston, the roots that were there. So I just want to say, I jotted down a few things that uh, I think the panel, this is one of my protégés here. <laughs> he, was, he was excellent. Loretta, I remember that typing class. <laughs> Loretta, she went on to become, become an excellent typist. But her, her fingers were a little <laughs> Loretta, I remember. Loretta, did, she was in my typing class with Miss, it was Miss Points then, who became Miss Griffin. So those were just, I jotted down a few things, but I think that uh, desegregation, uh, you, you named it. We've lost, it was on the backs of a lot of black folk. They closed our schools and we felt the brunt of desegregation. It was not fair, we've survived and God bless you and let's keep the legacy of Hop and Boston alive. Amen. Question, Mr. Sarah? My name is Elsa Sarah. You would be a great fit for the school. Mm -hmm. Will you speak to Stand up. Stand up and come ready. Let's see if I can. <laughs> I go, I, yeah, I'm Marguerite Syfax Valerie. I came to Arlington 65 years ago. So you know I'll be 90 in February. Wow. With you. What, what was so important to us, we lived in a big house next door, across the street from Hoffman, Boston. And it was, to, to us, it was an annex to the school because uh, we were so related to everybody in the school. As a, as a parent, I worked with everything in that school. I knew all the teachers. Uh, Mr. Sidnor was the, was the principal at that time. And I can remember our house was the hotel and the restaurant. The restaurant. <laughs> Because when, teacher, when students came up from Virginia State to do their student teaching, they stayed in our house. There was no charge. It was family. They came there. And then when the teachers came, before they were found a house, they stayed with us. Remember Dr. Daniel, uh, Dr. Daniel Brown, the state was, lived with us, and he went on to great things here in Arlington. But it was a very close relationship. We had a washer and dryer. We washed the clothes from, for the, the uh, football team at that time. But it was a beautiful relationship that we worked with them over and over again. And, and later I would like to talk about the, the community relationship with Hoffman Boston, what we found when we came here 65 years ago. You want to do that now or later? All right, but uh, my husband uh, was William Thomas Syfax. He brought me here to Arlington in, in 1947 as a bride, one year bride. He was just dismissed from the, not dismissed, from the army, just was, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, he came out of the service. He did very well in the service. And when we came here to Arlington on, it was called Johnson Hill. And we, and we joined Mount Olive Baptist Church because all the Syfax family belonged to that years ago. And so we came back into Mount Olive and worked with, in Mount Olive. And one of the, the most important things that, that, that happened with us, we, we look back and see the, in the church, as big as Mount Olive was, there were two people in that church with a college education. That was Reverend Mackley, who was going to store college at the time and working on his master's. And that's where he sent William. Uh, came the year that William graduated from uh, off in Boston. And also uh, Adele Britton, who was a math teacher. The two of them. Then when my husband came, he was the third person. So that it was a problem here on the hill, or in, in Arlington. Arlington County said that there was going to be indoor plumbing. So that meant we had outdoor toilets. So there were two African elderly women who own most of the property up on this hill, on, the, on Johnson Hill. That was Miss Minnie Green and Miss Ida Somerville. If you remember Miss Ida Somerville, house was across the street from where Brenda lives right now. And it's a property that was bought by the Hoffman Boston at that time. So she came to my husband who was an uh, engineer, but he was electrical engineer, knew nothing about contracting. But she said that 
all her property, she would have all with her income, and we had to take care of it. So would he help her? So he studied up and make a long story short, we got involved in tearing down the buildings and building new buildings, and we kept going. It, it put us in business. I was 30 years, I was working with the, with the construction where we built Arlington, Alexandria, uh, the churches, addition to churches. We had a lot of experience. We received rewards from the uh, Black Enterprise, from Virginia State College, for the work that was done there. My husband became the president of the, uh, our association, Arlington, we named it Arlington View. We named it Arlington View at the time. But it was a family affair. I knew everybody on that hill. I'm used to going in and out of the houses, and now I'm looking at the grandchildren. It, uh, <laughs> it started off at that. But it was, I'll never forget it. I, the, the church is my home church. I've never taken my, my uh, membership from the church. I told my husband, you got to bring me back here when it comes time. But I, Arlington is just in my heart. It will always be important. And so many of you stay in contact with me. And I know all of your children as my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But Arlington, I'll never forget. Hoffman, Boston, I'll never forget. Fine young people that came out of that school. And I'm just proud that my children went there. Thank you. Anyone else have a memory that should be documented? Okay, Lois. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Elmer Lowe, and I went to Hoffman Boston between the time of uh, Dennis. Dennis and Loretta. So I'm in between them. I graduated in the class of 1955. I stayed there approximately four years because I went there when they were changing the A and B grade. Not because I was smart. I graduated right after I was 16. Not because I was like a uh, violin. <laughs> <laughs> and then I entered the military. I stayed 25 years in the military. I spent most of the time here in DC. I was lucky I got into the intelligence field. And we spent uh, at Arlington Hall, uh, the Pentagon, I took the family to Germany, France, and we had a tour in England. I came back and went to uh, 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 Alaska, one of the worst tours I had. <laughs> <laughs> I was on isolated uh, tour duty, where most of the time your isolated tours are strictly men. I was unlucky when I went there, they integrated it with women. <laughs> I was first sergeant, and they had uh, 13 women and 300 men. I had a heck of a job. <laughs> <laughs> but then I did, I came back to Arlington and I, I live right now where it was that uh, Carver Center, 13th and Queen Street. Never thought I would live on Johnson Hill. I'm originally from Green Valley area. <laughs> and uh, after getting out the military, of course, I became a deputy sheriff in Arlington, <laughs> which most of the people knew me as Sheriff Lowe. I was a deputy sheriff for almost 20 years. And now, I am the president of Arlington Branch in WACP. And we do a lot of things for education. We have a scholarship fund. On the 13th of October, we'll be having our Freedom Fund Banquet the fourth one under my administration. I don't know how many of y'all know Joe Mascara. Anybody know Joe? Okay. I met Joe some years ago. And every year we give off what we call the uh, Charles P. Monroe Civil Rights Award. Last year we gave it to the four students who integrated Stratford Junior High School. Three of, two of them were there. This year, Joe is getting that award. So if you want to meet Joe, once again, he's 91 years old. And he'll be at our banquet on the 13th of October. So if you see me, I'll tell you how to get a ticket to the banquet. But you know, Huff and Boston, it was a strict school. And of course, us boys, boys will be boys. And so uh, 
Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin used to carry with him a thing called quake. Quirk, quirk, quirk. I know it. Uh, yeah, Bertha. Yeah, yeah, Bertha was a big one. Yes, and hurt the You know, very seldom you said something back to Mr. Griffin. <laughs> and very seldom did you get quirk or any of them unless you deserved it. I got it once. <laughs> but he would bend your hand back like that, and woo-woo. <laughs> You'd rather have it in your hand than on your... <laughs> But uh, we never got that much punishment. We got, like I said, discipline. We knew when to study and we knew when to play. And it was because we had a man like Mr. Griffin, Mr. Halstead, Miss Champion, Miss Pinkard, all of them. They knew Elmer. Elmer always done little things, you know, like Miss Champion. She could always smell gum, smell food. <laughs> So we would go back in the back of the class. Some, some of you ladies know, and eat some of your lunch. And she would, I smell some spearmint gum. Or I smell, and she knew just who was doing it. And then she had a little ease. She would give you, red ease. She'd give you another little book. But we learned something from that. Hubbard Boston prepared me for the outside world. Because I didn't come there doing the integrated part, it was segregated when I went. We had to go to all black school. But I was prepared, I knew discipline. And that made me a good military man. That I'd done 25 years in it. But things have changed now. Because when we went to school, the first thing we'd done, we read the Bible, said the Lord's Prayer, and sang a song and went to class. Now you can't do none of those. At that time, the teachers had control of you. Mm -hmm. Now teachers don't have control. When you can't discipline a child, you lose control. And that was some of the problem between then and now. I think that school made more men and women out of us than the school today. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to see and uh, hear what some of the young kids are saying now is pathetic. And some way we got to get that back. Go back there and, because most of the time you can't even talk to the parents. You can't tell the parents what the children is doing. But uh, the biggest short st story of it, I enjoyed those days. And Huff and Boston made me a man. Thank you. My name is Marie Pelham Smith, and I was one of the uh, students that uh, transferred to Washington Lee two years before I was supposed to graduate as a result of following my best friend. And uh, she got her, I got my papers in to uh, transfer. She didn't. And then the next year, she put her papers in, and she decided to go to Washington Lee. Well, within a week's time, she decided this wasn't for me. I didn't know until later that she had forged her mother's signature <laughs> so she could go back. I stayed. In some of the classes that I was in, I was the only black child. And it was very, very traumatic for me. But I learned how to cope. And those values that I got from HB followed me throughout life. Also in the elementary school, I was taught I had to go to school every day. I've had numerous uh, years of a perfect attendance, and it followed me all the way through my uh, government uh, career. And as a result of that, I worked 42 years and five months for the federal government. And uh, I just wanted to say those values have stuck with me throughout life, and I was able to uh, be successful. And I just want to say that uh, nowadays, some of the people that I work with, um, 
the younger people, they use all their leave up. <laughs> and uh, I was able to not even have to take off leave without pay, uh, have anybody to um, donate leave to me when my children were sick. I always had enough time. So the values that the teachers instilled in us at HB were tremendous in my life. And I just wanted to say that, you know, if we had the values, uh, the kids would have the values that we had when we were going to school, they would be much better off. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Next uh, hand that I saw was Andrea Peterbar. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to say that I was one of the last class that attended uh, Hoffman Boston in the junior high department. Um, that was back in 64, closed, I guess, in 65. So I was one of the ones that was one of the last ones. I'm also the great-granddaughter of Mr. Hoffman. So I have lots of roots there at Hoffman Boston. Uh, my aunt uh, continues to thrive upon the fact that my grandfather was uh, the principal there. We don't know uh, Mrs. Uh, Boston, uh, I think it was a woman. We've tried to find out some information about her, but I've also talked to, I think, Brenda, and no one seems to know exactly who she really was or what her, from what I gather, she was the secretary there. I did hear that once. So there's, you know, if anyone knows any information about Ms. Boston, I'd love to know that information. I just wanna say I have to give kudos to the group because many of the names that they mention, I remember those people. Ms. Pinker was my homeroom teacher um, Mrs. Griffin, I remembered her in typing, um, didn't have her. But when I went back to Huffman Boston a couple of years ago to see the school now that it's been renovated, a lot of things had changed. And one of the things was when we walked through the school, we went looking for the typewriting room, well, the typing class. And what was in the typing class? Computers. We said, gee, this is totally different for us because we all remember coming up on the good old manual typewriter and then going into the electric typewriter. So I have to say, Hoffman Boston means a lot to me. And I keep that every time I go by, I think about the classes that I sat in in the building. I can still picture myself sitting in that school and I have to say thank you to all the parents, my parents, for one, who kept me grounded. And many of the things that talking about the disciplining, I can speak to that because I came back here after graduating from Wakefield. Uh, I graduated from Wakefield in high school. Then I went away to uh, Livingstone College and graduated and came back here and taught at Drew School where I started here in Northern Virginia. So I just want to say thank you to all the parents who kept us grounded, who, yeah, many times we were worried about the paddles. Yeah, when he talked about the hand being bent back, I remember the thick ruler, not that little flippy thing now, <laughs> but the big thing that hit my hand a couple of times for talking, because I am a big talker, still am, as you can see. But I just want to say again, thank you to all of you all who have kept living, uh, who have kept Hoffman Boston a part of our lives today. Okay. Oh, okay. Barbara, and then come on, Della. Come on, Barbara. Barbara. Good morning. Good morning, class. I'm 63, <laughs> but most of my friends came along in 62, 63, and 64. Identify I'm a valid girl. 
I was born in South Arlington. It's Barbara R. Johnson. I was born to Johnson. I am a Johnson, even though I was married. And I'll go away from here, hopefully, a Johnson. <laughs> My mom, Rosa Johnson, was very instrumental back in the early 50s uh, for getting bus service from Green Valley to Huffman, Boston, when my brother was going to school. They had to walk. They had to walk from Green Valley all the way to Huffman, Boston. Mama, uh, Ms. Brown, uh, Joe Fisher, uh, Lillian, Lillian Brown, I believe her name was, uh, John Robinson, uh, several others were very instrumental in working with Arlington County to get all kinds of grants and things going so our people, our children could have a way to, to participate and to grow. I owe so much to Arlington County. I went to Drew Elementary School when we had Old Kemper School. I went to Old Kemper School under Ms. Haskell, um, and what we had, we had Fourth, third, third and fourth third grades and up there. We had Miss Smackham up there. <laughs> Holy moly. Barbara and Rose Owens, I treasure them because Barbara holds my m first name and Rose, wherever we go, she carries my middle name. <laughs> so we're connected to the hips. Uh, but then when I came out of school, I had to struggle because, see, I was hard headed. I was hard headed. And I had to end up going to night school to get what I had to, where I had to get. But you know what? Huff, because of what Huffman Boston instilled with me, in me, they gave me the courage, they gave me the determination to do what I had to do to make it and take care of my family. Rosa Johnson gave me that too. Hubert Johnson gave me that. Mm -hmm. And the community in South Arlington gave me that. I taught in Head Start, I taught kindergarten, I taught fourth, fifth grades at Drew, I went on to junior high school, I was a liaison between the police department, I think I was one of the first liaisons between Arlington Police Department and Green Valley. Joan came along with me, I believe, Joan came along with me at that time, then I went into the junior high school. I piloted programs, some of the first programs at Kenmore Intermediate School under Lilla Wise, um, um, uh, I can't even say, or uh, Taylor, he was up there too. Walter, uh, Taylor. Walt Taylor was up there. And my dear friend here, we have been here a long time together, Louise McGregor. We were co-workers we co together. Ms. McGregor was a dear friend of my mom and my dad as well. Nita, well, I'm not going to give you my nickname for her, <laughs> but <laughs> Anita, Anita and I were friends. I mean, we were like hooked at the elbow. And this guy right here, <laughs> this guy right here. And you, you turned me into a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he started a boxing club. That's why he started. But Miss Turner, Miss Turner was like, and her daughter Anita, we were all like family. All, I mean, we all used to be in each other's homes. Clayton, I mean, we used to sit on the side of Drew School Hill under a big oak tree sometime in the evening. Clayton used to, and I used to. But we were there. I mean, we've all been, Inez back here, we've all just grew up together. I just cannot tell you. Raymond Lockett back there, Della. You know, it's just amazing. And look, now I got children coming up. <laughs> Babies coming up. And look at Carolyn. Look at, look at Miss Marguerite. Look at her. I think I saw Pat and Top come in earlier. Oh, there you are. Said Jean. Said Jean. Hey, Top. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson had my son. When they had their little, where well, we used to have doo-wops in the valley, mm -hmm. on the corner, 
Mr. Wilson had my son with the, what did they call him, Mr. Wilson, uh, that little band that they, yeah. Um, and, but, I mean, it's still growing. I even finished up in Arlington County. I went into the high school teaching. I, but because of how from Boston, these kids respected me. I mean, no, you couldn't put your hands on them. You couldn't do this. But I tell you what, catch you out there doing something, I jack you up in, there, in one of their bathrooms in a hot beat. <laughs> and tell you real quick, I know you, Ma. And I know your grandma, and I know where you live. And don't you know they didn't play? But you got respect. You got respect. I said, you better not go in these schools now. I taught and had to retire in 98 because of my heart. Uh, but Arlington County has stood by me. They have been awesome to me. They have been awesome to me. And each and every last one of my friends have been even better. And I'll never forget this. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, Ardell is coming forward now, and then we'll move the program to the next. Excuse me. Oh, oh, Carolyn. Oh no, oh, Adele is coming. I won't talk long, Carolyn. I promise. Okay. I, I know Raymond's raising his hand. He wants to know what in the world she's gonna say. Most of you know me as Ar Ardella. The ones that went to HB, I know today because somebody will say, Ardella. I say, oh, that's somebody that knew me from HB. Because otherwise, they only know me as Della. They don't know who Ardella is. I was one of the classes that came, went to Wakefield. I was the first class that went to Wakefield and graduated in 1965. But I've got to say, I still felt like the class of 1964. I married Raymond Lockett, who was in that class of 64. Uh, I know most of us, class of 63, uh, um, uh, 66, like Ellora. There are many of us who all feel like we were, are still part of Hoffman Boston, mm -hmm. definitely. And thanks to Rosa King, who has always put these 1964 reunions together, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am always in that class because <laughs> I didn't know that. I belong to Hoffman Boston. <laughs> proud of it and will always be proud of it. Right. I just want to say one thing, especially to our parents, because on Johnson Hill, I know the same went on in Green Valley and Halls Hill and Hatchfield, but on Johnson Hill, and I especially got to speak to <coughs> Ms. Marguerite Syfax Valerie. She talked about going to her house. I was one of those kids that came out of school and went to her house. Actually, one of the biggest moments I remember was the lady that got the first color TV on Johnson Hill. <laughs> Marguerite Syfax, I was ready to go to her house any day. She welcomed all of the students and everybody. And I can't leave out Ma Burton over there because everybody know every child that played sports, somebody came out of her house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Somebody came out of her house. So, I mean, these are people, every door was open to everybody. It wasn't like, I mean, like you say, if you were in trouble, though, you could be in trouble on 13th Road, but you can guarantee by the time you got down to 12th Street on Queen Street anyway, somebody knew what you did wrong. Yeah. And you can guarantee you better have a story because your mother or father were going to know what you did wrong, too. And it was just the community. I tell people today, when we did things, we were one family one family in a community. There was no, I couldn't go to that house. If I needed to go to a house, I would go there. If the doors were open to every child in the community. And that's what I thank the parents for because now we don't even know some of our neighbors. Yeah. But in that day, those days in the 60s, we were a community and guess what? We're always gonna be a family and a community. And I thank you parents for that. So thank you very much. Kelly, you all have said so much. I mean, the only thing I think about, I think about our teachers and how I felt good about myself because of those teachers. And I remember my brother, when he went to the integrated school, he didn't get that same feeling. If you remember Mr. Holt, and I go back, I remember mm -hmm. repeating to one of my friend's daughters, Holt said something, and I remember talking about, you have voluptuous, succulent lips. 
Remember that? And I had a young girl who was very, she, she, her lips were good. She didn't want anybody to see. And I said, darling, you're beautiful. You have voluptuous, succulent lips. And I thought about that. I said, you know, I got that from high school. And I got that from Mr. Holt, who wrote a lot of new words and made you feel good about yourself. And about Mary Robinson. Do you remember her? Counselor? She told me a story about they didn't think that she was going to make it. And she was going to prove them wrong. I was having problems in one of my classes, and, and I'll never forget her. And then Mrs. Burles, I always wanted to be tall. Burles was short, <laughs> but she was a dynamic woman. She was short, so I was determined I was going to be short. I was going to be making, I was going to be dynamic, too. But when I went away to school, I remember the kids saying, how many kids in your class? That's 55. You went to a private school? I went to Hoffman, Boston. Oh, you went to school in Boston? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, shit. I went to school in Arlington, Virginia. But... Because of that closeness, it was a private school. And you all might have liked going close to my house or stopping by, but it was not good for me. I couldn't wear lipstick and take it off fast enough to get home. <laughs> and I had to go by, and everybody reminded me that I live right over there. So everything would be right. But the teachers, if you think about it, our teachers had master's degrees. You think about that. These kids are coming straight out of college as undergrads. But most of them had master's plus. And they were the best teachers there. And they stayed with you and made sure you learned everything. I miss that. And um, being active in things. I think about Anita said she couldn't join certain things. We joined everything. We were at every kind of club there was to join. And I turned with my own children. I had them in everything because that's how we were brought up. You were in some class. You were in some activity after school because the school was that small and so personal. And you knew everybody from 7th grade to 12th grade. So it was a family. I, I loved that school. And it's the only school song I remember. I've been to how many colleges? But I remember Hoffman Boston's high school song that Mr. Boyd wrote. And he was another positive influence in our life. So it was a great school. It was a great school. Oh, OK, Tony. And then we'll move on. We have the room until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Come on up, Tony. I can never stay here. <laughs> but anyway, I, I was one of the uh, last students to leave Hoffman Boston also in 64, 65. And um, that was the last graduating class from there. And uh, well, no, I, I graduated from Wakefield. And um, it was really an experience to know that I was supposed to be a negative person. And because we, as blacks, were supposed to be negative. And I didn't understand that. I think part of it had to do with the fact that there weren't blacks on TV, and so when I looked at things like um, Dragnet or whatever, I thought that whites were bad. <laughs> and so I, I, I just didn't know. And, but I know that I felt a certain way because it was, you know, whenever it was in the paper that you were, um, that it, anything negative that was in the paper, it <laughs> usually had to do with uh, whites also. And so I just didn't know why I felt negative, but yet and still, I did. And when I got to Wakefield, it was very different, very different, because I saw kids that were um, leaning up against the, the, the lockers and kissing and all of that. And we weren't allowed to do anything like that at <laughs> all in Boston, I mean, you know. And so it was just a re really different experience. Um, I, I guess because I'm getting ready to retire from the government, uh, from Arlington government, I, I'm feeling, I, I'm really understanding what I have done in the county. And a part of that has to do with the fact that I helped to start the substance abuse program in Arlington. Uh, I went with the parents up to the county board and we were able to get uh, a lot of people 
together and we were able to get the, the, count, the uh, program together. And so I was a part of that. And, um, and I had forgotten about that until lately. But, um, and as you can tell, I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to say that it was interesting being a part of that whole Hawkman Boston uh, experience because we learned to excel. Thank you. My name is Noni Dabney. Perhaps some of you say Inez Dabney. Noni Dabney, that's me. Um, I was with the class of uh, Tony, and I think of listening to uh, Sandra speak of her experience going to Stafford, and I'm thinking of my experience going to Wakefield. The, the loving, caring environment of HB was not at Wakefield. And I thank God for Mr. Holt and um, Ms. Dupree um, because when I ran into difficulties at that school because I never had milk thrown on me and people not really disciplined for that behavior. Um, so I wasn't feeling the integration thing too good because I felt like I came from an environment where when things were done that were not uh, correct, they were correctly taken care of. I felt like I was in an environment that I could go to a teacher and I could get help and sometimes teachers volunteered. I think of Miss um, Mildred Johnson, the librarian. I remember I wanted to go on a field trip <clears throat> and my parents uh, did not have the money or didn't give me the money to go on the trip and she saw me crying in the hallway and she came to me and she um, wanted to know what was wrong and she, um, she ended up giving me the money to deal with that and instead of trying to get the money back from my parents that I got from her, she taught me how you deal with the library and that's how I paid the money back. HB was a wonderful, wholesome environment. Yeah, yeah. It, really, it really did something for us as human beings and I feel that a lot of whatever I did in the 43 years when I worked in um, Arlington Recreation, I tried to extend those kind of energies to, to the young people that I dealt with um, and teach some of the values that have been taught to me. So now I'm an adult and I'm dealing with children now and I pulled on the things that were done for me to give to them and hopefully some of them really got it and they will do it because I'm not knocking integration. Integration is good for some people. It ain't good for all people. If people are not going to be fair and just, it's not good, okay? And I felt like I had that at Huffman Boston, and I'm going to be quiet. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to thank everybody who contributed to the discussion. Uh, you know, today they don't talk too much about Hoffman Boston Junior Senior High School. Now it's an elementary school, and it's really like a little United Nations. The whole character of the school has changed. So for me, this experience has been priceless. Uh, as you saw in the, in the DVD that we played, uh, we were a community, and at this point, we want to ask all of the Hoffman Boston parents who are present to come forward so that we can acknowledge you and say thank you on behalf of the student body. You can stand in the cut for the people, for our parents who have gone on. So will all Hoffman Boston parents please come forward now. And, and I would say, If you're here with your parent, you can come up and present them with a rose on behalf of the student body of Hoffman Boston.
Vader. Okay, we have somebody else who's in it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Tell Gisa. Yeah, uh huh. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, I see the name down there. And give one to Miss Arm or Miss Robin. I need to get yours up here. Okay. And give one to Miss Robin. Yeah, I'm going to give her one. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. And also, Mrs. McGregor, for holding the four down for our teachers' yeah, representatives. Yeah. Right. Thank you. We, I think we need to acknowledge our parents who are here. Miss Buddy or Elroy? Andrea? Wait. Andrea? Andrea left. Okay. Buddy or Elroy? As we've seen today, our school could not have functioned without the support of all the parents that kept us. With so many efforts went unsung, unnoticed, but we came together and today we would just like to say thank you for everything that you did as a parent, as a member of the community to support us and to make us the people that we are today, to make the community what it has been. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and if any of you have parents, uh, Mr. Rowe, before you go, stay up here for a second. Um, we're gonna have Mr. Rowe present formally present the DVD to the Virginia Room. This DVD is going to be a part of a public record. It's going to be, the, the public library is going to make it available for people to see. And Judy will come forward and Mr. Rowe will do the official presentation. Judy. On the behalf of the Rowe family, I present you this DVD on Huffman Boston for filing with the Arlington County uh, Library. Okay. Okay, this is bringing our program to a close. At this point, we're gonna have remarks. Um, I think we lost, did, did the superintendent leave? Oh, he's gone, okay, well, uh, Dr. Murphy, who was who is the current superintendent of schools in Arlington, was here, but at this point, uh, Judy is gonna come up and give remarks, and we're gonna have remarks from also uh, Robert Bay, who's from the George Mason University, Li uh, University Archives. If we don't tell our story, it won't be told, as I said, Today, they don't even talk about Hoffman Boston Junior, Senior High School. So I would encourage all of you to speak. I want you to know who these people are so that we can make an effort to document the life at Hoffman Boston. So Judy is gonna come up now. Thank you, this is a wonderful program and I thank all of you for participating and it, it helps uh, create more understanding of, of the school and its place in the community. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to say. I'm, I'm not in competition with Mr. Bay, um, but we do have an oral history program in the Virginia Room, and I know a couple of you here have participated in it. Uh, I certainly want you to participate with Mr. Bay as well, but um, we would like to remind you that I may be trying to pigeonhole some of you and grab you and say, would you, would you contribute? It's a, such an important way for us to add to our knowledge of the history of the community, so we hope you will, will, will do that, and we'll try to persuade you. 
Um, one other thing is, oh, I, I talked about the archives. We are one of the things we would really like to add are some of the yearbooks from Hoffman Boston. We collect the yearbooks for all the high schools and junior highs. We have very few for Hoffman Boston. So if any of you can have an extra copy or can bear to part with them, uh, they go in our collection. And people do come in and they want to see them, and we have them maybe five years. That's all. So I would make a plea for that. Uh, the one, one other thing I wanted to mention. I know there, there's been some interest in the. Um, Brenda said in, in the um, Mr. V um, Rose transferred uh, Super 8 film. And uh, we will put that up on the county uh, website. So it, it may be a couple of weeks before it's up there. But if you go to the library's website and you click on local history and then go to digital collections, there will be a copy of that and you can view it um, for yourself in your home or whatever you want to do. Also, as part of that, um, if you look at the digital collections, there's a collection in there that is uh, from Ernest Ho uh, Johnson, who was the head at the time of the Negro Recreation League. And we have some wonderful photographs from that. I believe one of our panelists is a ballerina in there. Uh, Sandra is one of them on there. <laughs> so you can, you can see Sandra as a young ballerina. Um, it's a wonderful collection of all the activities in that, in that, um, in that, at that time. And we were so fortunate because his wife later donated all those to the Virginium. So you can see all of those and, and our other digital collections as well. So I hope you will. We'll do that. Uh, we also, um, a lot of those people are not identified. Maybe Sandra knows some of these, or some of you might know who the people. We would love to be able to identify the individuals because we don't necessarily know who they are. So thank you again for coming, and I hope you will help us and, and contribute your oral histories and whatever else you have to the Virginia where it will be preserved. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask Robert Vake to come up and just introduce himself and during the repass hour, you can make yourself known to him. Great. Hi, folks, and thanks, Brenda and Judy, for that nice lead-in. Uh, my name is Bob Vey, and I work at George Mason University as an archivist, and my specialty is preserving media. So my mouth just waters when I see a piece of film like we just saw about an hour ago. Um, I serve on a statewide organization called DOVE, and that stands for Desegregation of Virginia Education. And what we do is we make sure that the records per pertaining to segregation and desegregation of education in the state of Virginia are preserved and that people have access to them. They're not just somehow mysteriously lost. Um, and, and these kind of record, these records are any kind of records. They're um, school board records, the individual school records, uh, personal papers of officials. Uh, and another thing that we really try to collect are oral histories. Uh, just this spring, we did a number of events across the state. Um, we did one in the Eastern Shore, in Richmond, in Alexandria, uh, Hampton, and Farmville. And during, this, uh, during these programs, we sh uh, showed a small film about the, um, about the Farmville schools, but we also conducted oral histories, and we interviewed 65 people from across the state who talked about uh, going to school uh, in either segregated schools or desegregated schools uh, you know, during the last 50 years or so. Um, so kind of this is where you all come in. Um, we'd like to set up sort of an event where we could um, do some oral histories with people from Hoffman Boston, uh, Hoffman Boston uh, alumni sometime in the near future. Uh, perhaps uh, I could coordinate with Brenda maybe. Um, if anyone's interested in this, we could maybe get a list of people and maybe we can uh, have an event somewhere, set it up, who knows, maybe here or Maybe at the school itself, I don't know if, if we could use that, but that would make a great backdrop. Um, but we would do maybe interviews with two, three, four people at a time. Uh, you know, we often do one-on-one -on -one oral history, histories, but sometimes the pressure comes off when you have friends next to you. And sometimes friends kind of get you talking about things that you've forgotten or that you might not have brought up. Um, so we'd like to set up some, some sort of an event where we get some people together from Hoffman, Hoffman, I keep Hoffman, Hoffman Boston, Boston uh, together, and we just do a couple hours, and people sit down with us for maybe half an hour at a time, and just talk about 
the things they remember from uh, Hoffman Boston. Um, I brought in a stack of our brochures from Dove, and they were the last couple I had, and, and I can just tell I don't have enough for everyone. Um, but I'm just going to leave them out on the table out there, and if you're interested, grab one. It'll tell you more about uh, it'll tell you more about our program. Um, it also has my contact information because I'm the Northern Virginia rep from this organization. And it, like I said, it has, we have people from libraries and archives and historical associations from across the state participating in this. So this is my, my territory here in Northern Virginia. Um, look forward to perhaps meeting some of you folks. Um, like I said, if we could get a group of people together and maybe coordinate it with Brenda and we'll set up some sort of event and we can get together and talk a little bit more about HV. So thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Bob. Feel free to contact him and if you're interested or let me know. Um, today we have with us some of the county officials, as I said, Dr. Murphy was here. We do have the chairperson of the school board, um, Dr. Emma Wyland Sanchez, if she'd like to come up. She's the chairperson, the current chair of the Arlington County School Board. I am in awe. <laughs> I think that the stories, unfortunately, came a little late. Tell about how a school can build relationships, how teachers, educators work with the community, and how we build community. Um, as a chair of the school board, you know, I'm one of five, but I can pledge with you to do some follow-up because what you said is what our students need to hear. You are the role models. You are what makes your community strong and I have a lot of respect for what you're doing. These are memories that cannot go away. Thank you for teaching me something, teaching me the power of community and pride in who you are, your culture, and your race, and I will continue to learn from you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have a current member of the county board here, Ms. Libby Garvey. Would you like to stand? Do you have something? <laughs> and we. We have a former member of the county uh, school board, Mr. Frank Wilson, here. Okay, I think we're coming to the end of our uh, program. Again, I thank you, but we're going to dismiss by singing our school song. Okay? Oh, before we do that, this program was uh, uh, Arlington Cable, Tape this program, and he told me it will be up on YouTube and and be in the library. But this, uh, we'll send an email out to everybody about getting access. But our activity today has been taped, and it will be available. Um, and I'll let you know. I'll send an email to everybody. So let's stand and sing our school song and be dismissed, okay? Someone with a voice can lead it. <laughs> oh, here's Dennis. No, I'm oh. not ready. Okay. Thank
song that we will promise to keep true. We'll fight for you and honor you. For we love you, Hoffman Boston High School. Yeah.